So Mary J. Blige is on her way to being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I started thinking, like, when the first time I noticed Mary J. Blige? It was with Father MC. It was Father MC's I'll Do For You. Now, I didn't know who she was back then because it was all about Father MC because Father MC had treated his first single string like they want to be treated with Jodeci. But again, they weren't Jodeci. It was just Father MC and it was I'll Do For You, Father MC. And it was this chick that was singing. And she was singing great, right? Um, but we didn't know who she was. And as, if you don't know the story, it's a legendary story. Mary J. Blige, uh, she was in a mall and they had a karaoke um, booth and she made, she did a demo tape and the tape, she sang uh, Anita Baker's uh, Ca Caught Up in the Rapture. You know, shout out to Anita Baker. Um, so she made that song and then somehow that tape found its way to Andre Harrell, the president of Uptown Records. They signed Mary and they dis he dispatched his A&R guy, Sean Puffy Combs, to uh, be in charge of Mary career and uh, Jodeci's career when it came to A&R. So initially, Jodeci was on Father MC's first single and then, and then Mary's on um, Father MC's second single. So in a lot of ways, if it wasn't for Father MC, we might not get Casey and Jojo and Devante and Dalvin and Mary J. Blige. So shout out to Father MC. Yeah, he was a poor man's big daddy came, but the hits that he did make, there are classics. So then Mary drops her first single, You Remind Me, and that was off the Strictly Business soundtrack. And Strictly Business is a film starring Halle Berry and uh, Tommy Davidson. And that's the first time I saw Halle Berry. And I was like, oh, my God, who is she? And how can I marry her? <laughs> she was so pretty. <laughs> oh, my God. Halle Berry was beautiful. Oh, my God. But that's a different that's a different thing. So, so then Mary drops the remix of You Remind Me. And then they drop What's the 411 in 1992. Now, Mary was not the first female artist to incorporate hip hop beats in the, in the R and B. There was other women before her, uh, other women before her. In fact, Janet Jackson with Janet Jam Terry Lewis kind of did the same thing with hip hop beats and her stuff. And um, in Vogue, when they first came out with "Hold On," that was like a very hip hop ish type track with her, with their producers Foster McElroy, right? But when but Mary was different. Mary was the youngest of all of them. Mary was a round the way girl. She wore boots jeans jerseys like if you look at that real love video you know it's like her and them girls those young ladies they was wearing cubit x giants uh jerseys and they cubit x giants were from the nico leagues and, they, and that was the era where everybody was wearing nico league jerseys they had i think they had x hats on because spike lee's malcolm x was about to come out so they had x hats they had knee pads they had boots they were just going at it just dancing <laughs> I challenge you when you're done watching this video, go go listen to the first 10 seconds of Real Love and don't tell me you have a smile on your face like, oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> and the beautiful thing about that song, the first time I heard it's like, oh my God, they're using Audio 2's top billing on this track. And that track was produced by, Real Love was produced by Mark Mor Morales, aka Prince Marky D from the Fat Boys, who was a fabulous producer in in the early to mid 90s. And unfortunately, he passed away in 2020, 21. So rest in peace, Prince Marky D. But Real Love is just one of those tracks I will never get tired of. But that album overall was great. You had Reminisce, like my man D-Man, he did a remix of that in college where he used to, he used her vocals on, on the Gap Band's Outstanding, which was just fantastic. Uh, Love No Limit, uh, she did a remix of Shaka Khan's uh, Sweet Thing. Um, there was What's the 411, the title track featuring Grand Poobah, where he was like, yo, hon, what's the 411? Yeah, what's the 411? Yeah, I got it going now. You know, I got it going on. <laughs> you don't have that same back and forth with male and female in just rapping or R&B stuff anymore. You don't have that synergy anymore, man. It was just painful. That was a really good album. And the thing that I love about Mary's voice back then, she still had that jazzy element to her voice because she was still influenced by Nina Baker. So if you hear listen to those tracks like Reminisce or Love No Limit, there's a jazziness to her voice. She didn't... She didn't going to full Mary J until a little bit later. So her voice was a little bit restrained. It was still Mary, but it was just a, it was just, it was a more of a rhythmic Mary vocal back then, which was great. And again, there was life before Mary and life after Mary. And then after that, we get a SWV, we get a Jade. We later get a Faith Evans, who was basically after Puff got fired from Uptown, went to Bad Boy, signed Faith. And I'm sure his relationship with Mary got strained because Faith sounded like Mary when she first came out. We get a blue Cantrell, you know. And it also combined with En Vogue, too, because basically SWV was a, was a, a, was a Vogue version 
of Mary. As Jade was like an evoked version of Mary. It was all hip hop, man. It's, she was fantastic. So then we get to the second album, My Life. Because a lot of people keep on saying Puffy produced the first album. He didn't. He produced uh, just just the uh, like a, a message on the first album. He produced, but he knocked out all the other producers from the first album, unfortunately. But he produced My Life. And My Life, for a lot of people, is their favorite Mary J. Blige album. And I can't disagree with that. Like I'm a fan, a bigger fan of the first one just because it was revolutionary to me. But I can understand why people love my life. There's no skips on that album. You just play it and let it ride. She be happy is just a fantastic. It uses a fantastic Rick James sample. My life is just it uses a Roy Ayer sample. It's a great album, right? It's just and you look at her, uh, and you look at her in some of those videos, like, man, she's so young. Like she was like 22, 23 years old, man. She still had this, she has the same voice she had today, but as a 22 year old. So then probably her next best album after that was probably Mary in 1999. The thing about Mary J. Blige is that she wasn't, she wasn't like Janet Jackson and Mariah Carey, where she just was able to just make hit album, hit the album after hip album. She was, good at just choosing hits like them but maybe not consistent hit albums so that's what you know so that's what, but she makes she made iconic tracks like family affair with dr dre um just fine 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 with jazzy faye and tricky stewart no more drama with, with uh jimmy jam and terry lewis and not going crying no more with baby face off the uh when it's exhale soundtrack with face for the one and oscar for that uh i can love you with little Kim. It's like, Mary is just, she's just a hit maker, man. Like she's fantastic. Um, but I started thinking like, what's my favorite Mary J. Blythe song. And it's, it's not even a song that's on any of those albums. It's all I need with uh, method man, you know, cause I didn't know it was a remake from Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell. And when I heard that version, the original version, I was like, Oh my God, Marvin and Tammy were so great together. <laughs> they were never a couple, but they, they felt like you felt like they were in love and method and Mary, they had a different type of energy. But all I need, the remix version, is one of those classic hip hop tracks of all time. I can still envision them sitting on the roof, just nodding like this, like Mary got her head down, man, and Meth just like vibing, like, gotta be my favorite track. Even of all the great Mary J. Blige tracks, I love all I need, right? And it made me start thinking, like, who is Mary J. Mary J. Blige 2.0? Like, who are the daughters of Mary J. Blige? Who, in, who encompasses Mary J. Blige? And there's only two artists I can think of who has who has Mary's type of feel and energy. One, Fantasia Barino, when, if we talk about performance. Now, Mary, every time Mary sings, no matter if she's on key or off key, you feel every word that Mary sings. And Fantasia's the same way. Like, Fantasia sings her heart out. The difference between Fantasia and Mary is Mary's not much of a dancer, but Fantasia is like a whirlwind. She's like a whirlwind Tina Turner. She's just whirling around. But she's fantastic at it. She, I mean, she got the pike at the best cardio by any fe female R&B vocalist out there today. But yeah, Fantasia sings with the same passion like Mary J. Blige because you feel every Mary lyric. And musically, it's Jasmine Sullivan. Jasmine Sullivan sings with the same pain, the same heartache, the same angst like Mary. Mary's built a whole career off of that, right? Jasmine Sullivan can very easily sing just about any Mary J. Blige song. And Mary J. Blige can sing just about any Jasmine Sullivan song because they're the same. And this is why Jasmine Sullivan is sticking around for so long. Because Jasmine, Jasmine's been around for a long time, but Jasmine has no peer. Because vocally, no one can match Jasmine Sullivan. Just like Mary J. Blige really didn't have a peer. Like, you know, you had Faith Evans, you had a few others, Lou Cantrell, but really vocally, even if Mary's vocals can be kind of raw sometimes, she had no... Mary's the queen of our hip hop and R and B. It's Mary, <laughs> Tim's and all. Even though she's all refined now. So, what's your five favorite Mary J. Blige tracks? Like she made a ton of songs. I gave you a few, but what's your five favorite? And tell me what's your favorite. And tell me a song that we should check out that might be underrated. I think it was underrated. The London Sessions she made a few years ago. That was an underrated album. But shout out to Mary J. Blige being inducted to the hip hop. I'm sorry, the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The queen of hip-hop on R&B. Man, I don't even know what music would be without Mary J. Blige. I can't even imagine it.